When it comes to electric cars, the question we're all asking is, how far can I go on a charge? Well, the official number that comes with every electric car, the one that tells you what its range is, is called the WLTP figure. What does that actually mean? The WLTP test is the World Harmonised Light Duty Vehicle Test Protocol. And who doesn't love a good protocol these days? In its simplest form, it's the test that all new vehicles must go through to work out their fuel economy and emissions. For electric cars, the WLTP test works out their range. Each car goes through a 30 minute test drive designed to simulate a wide range of different driving conditions and styles, with an average speed of 46 km an hour and a top speed of 131 km an hour. It's scientific stuff, but the limitation is that it's done in a lab. So the final number that the test comes up with, the range that your new electric car officially has, might not be achievable under all circumstances. It's a good estimate, but how do you know how much range you'll actually get? And what makes the most difference to your range when you're driving? It's all about a balance of energy. You need to draw energy from the battery to turn the electric motor to drive the car. You can trickle a bit of energy back into the battery under braking, but what's more important is how much and how often you're drawing energy out. Equally important are the factors that mean you need to draw more out more often. Those factors are broadly how you drive, where you drive, whether you're carrying anything heavy, and whether you've got anything sticking up into the airflow. We're going to take this Skoda Enyaq out for a spin and talk about the kind of difference your driving style makes, as well as how much energy you'll be using on different types of road. Plus, we're going to tell you how optional extras such as roof boxes or bike racks can affect your range. For now, I'm driving quite sensibly. I'm trying to anticipate corners coming up, accelerating as gently as I can, and trying to lift off and use the brake energy recuperation B mode. That's a system that slows the car down by using the drag of the electric motor, which then acts as a generator, returning a little bit of charge to the battery. Hang on. If pumping up your tyres saves fuel, wouldn't it stretch the range in an electric car too? Not quite. You should never pump your tyres up beyond their recommended pressures. But it's definitely a good idea to make sure that your tyres are correctly inflated and in good condition. Modern car tyres, especially those fitted to EVs, are designed to have low rolling resistance, or in other words, it's just easier to push them along and that saves you quite a bit of battery charge. Of course, that only works if the pressures are right. So you should get out and make sure that your tires are pumped up correctly. And you should do it regularly. It's been estimated that over a year's driving, incorrectly inflated tires could cost you as much as one full charge in an electric car like this. I'm gonna put my coat on now because it's getting a bit chilly. But what if I turn the heat up in an EV? Air conditioning and heating systems are becoming more efficient, but in general, cranking up the AC or turning up the heat will knock around 20 to 25 kilometers off your range. Of course, there's more than how you drive and whether or not you use the air conditioning to how much range you're going to get. Where you drive makes a dramatic difference too. Motorway driving, cruising at a constant 120 kilometers per hour will eat up way more range than driving on a road with lots of corners at slower speeds. The temperature outside the car is just as important, if not more so. Really cold weather will affect the ability of your car's battery to hold a charge. And on top of that, if it's cold out, you'll be using your heater more. So properly wintry weather can take a chunk out of your range, maybe as much as 25% in some cases. Weight is an obvious one. If you've got bags or boxes of stuff in the boot all the time, or maybe you're carrying passengers regularly, that will reduce your range. Every time I accelerate, all those added kilos have to be brought back up to cruising speed, and that takes energy from the battery. I need to carry lots and lots of stuff for a holiday. What if I want to fit a roof box? Anything like that can affect your aerodynamics. If you fit a roof rack or a roof box, for example, you're going to knock quite a bit off your range. If you're cruising at motorway speeds with a roof box, then you can wave goodbye to around about 50 kilometers of range. Towing is even worse. If you're hauling a caravan, you could be cutting two thirds off your range. And don't forget wind. Ireland is a spectacularly windy country. Driving into a headwind will drive up your energy consumption. If you want to work all this out before you leave, then there are some online tools that can help. 
Skoda, for example, has a calculator on its website that allows you to work out roughly how much range you can expect from your EV depending on different scenarios. It's not a guarantee exactly, but it means you can get a decent idea before you set off, and it might just teach you some good habits too. We're off the motorway now, and you'll see pretty quickly, once you get onto main roads with a 100 km an hour limit or city streets with a 50 km an hour limit, that your electric consumption will go way, way down. Actually, this is one of the things that makes EVs ideal for rural drivers. Country roads are perfect for EVs, as cruising speeds are never that high. Plus, you'll almost certainly have a driveway to park up and charge overnight on. I am so glad you're here. Why? I've got a lot of stuff to bring home tonight. Just let me go get it. All oh, that extra weight in my car? Not likely. Bye.